Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo, John Steed made his way swiftly down the platform. The Liverpool train was ready to pull out. He kept the youthful figure of Edward Salt in clear view. What he didn't know was that a honeymoon couple were also about to board the train. Hey! Hey, just a minute. Look there. That man. The one with the bowl and the umbrella. What man? The one ahead. It's the same man. Who? The same man who found Lucas's briefcase. The man that Bart went after. You sure? Positive. Bart didn't report back, did he? Missing. Believed dead. We'd better take a good look into this. Hadn't we? The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. Really powerful cleaning action. Mrs. Senior discovered this. My husband wears overalls to work, and they come back very sort of greasy and dirty. My girl actually does them by hand in the tub, but she uses cold water, Oma, and they're fine, and they come up perfectly clean. They say once an Oma user, always an Oma user? I've stuck to cold water, Oma, and I'm still using it. It's the strongest washing powder I've used. Cold water, Oma, cleans best. <laughs> Lux is the beauty soap chosen by beautiful film stars around the world. They choose Lux for its rich, moisturizing lather. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. Episode 4 of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel are once more caught up in an intriguing train of events. John Steed and Emma Peel had found the body of Mark Lucas in a disused waiting room at Chase Hot. It was clear from duplicate nameplate that read Norborough that he'd been tricked into getting off the train and had been murdered. From a thorough investigation of Lucas's papers, John Steed had managed to learn that there was to be an assassination of a VIP. What the plan was, who were the killers, and even who was the chosen victim, was still a mystery. But suspicion had fallen on Edward Salt, personal secretary to Admiral Cartney, and Steed had arranged to have some false information passed on to the Admiralty. It looked as though Salt had taken the bait. Steed followed him to the Liverpool train, having made sure that Mrs. Peel was fully in the picture. Salt boarded the train, entered the compartment, placed his case on the rack, and settled down behind a newspaper. Out in the corridor, Steed stopped and raised the handle of his umbrella to his lips. He clicked a small switch. A piece of the handle flew open. Steed spoke softly into the mesh of a concealed microphone. I haven't let Salt out of my sight, and so far he hasn't made any attempt to contact anyone, nor has anyone attempted to contact him. I'm going to join him in the compartment. The train's just about to leave. Two along the corridor. Do you do the journey often? Pretty often, yes. Salt retired behind his newspaper. The 810 to Liverpool roared on into the night. When Salt went to dine in the restaurant car, so did Steve. He returned slightly ahead of Salt and sat deliberately in the wrong seat. Oh, I, I, uh, I say, would you mind if we changed seats? Mine was reserved. I find it makes me a bit sick if I have my back to the engine. Oh, certainly not at all. As Steve moved to swap seats, he noticed the reserved note stuck above the seat. Seat four, compartment seven, carriage sixty-seven. Four, seven, sixty-seven. (whistles) 
out in the corridor, the groom left just near the compartment and sought out the ticket collector. Their conversation was brief and straight to the point. I was just coming to look for you. That man seated in self compartment. I think he's trouble. He was the man Bart went after. Right. In that case, we'd better tip Salt off about it, didn't we? When Salt came out into the corridor to stretch his legs and have a smoke, the ticket collector drew him a little to one side. Minutes later, Salt entered the compartment again. Steed appeared to be dozing, leaning heavily on his umbrella. Upon opening his eyes, he found himself looking down the wrong end of the revolver. Stay right where you are. Don't move. And don't speak. But you'd better start that tape recorder in the umbrella going, hadn't you, Steve? <laughs> On Northern Station, Mrs. Peel, having driven down at top speed, faced the platform well wrapped up against the cold night air. In the train that was hurtling through the dark towards her, the bride and groom were talking. Well, what's the news? All taken care of, my love. All taken care of. Mrs. Peel hastily scanned the few passengers who alighted. No sign of John Steed. She moved swiftly up the platform, stepping back hurriedly when she recognized Salt relaxing in his seat. She was about to move on when she noticed Steed's umbrella hanging from the rack. Salt left his seat and walked out into the corridor. Mrs. Peel nipped swiftly into the compartment and grabbed at the umbrella as it swung gently to and fro. Only just made it, Mrs. Peel. Later, in the just-married compartment, the bride and groom looked up as the door opened. The ticket collector entered. So it's just leaving next stop. Good. It isn't that message he brought us. Now it's from beginning to end. Not a word of truth in it. Sure. Positive. Oh, dear. He'll be going back to his office sometime tonight. In which case, I'd better be there to deal with him. Haven't I? Mrs. Beale headed for London and let herself into Steve's apartment. Forlorn hope, Mrs. Peel. Now, why would Steve leave his umbrella? What did he say? An agent in trouble always leaves something behind as an identification. Let's see. It didn't take Mrs. Peel long to find the secret in the hand. Mrs. Peel stared at the umbrella, then hurried to the phone. Within minutes, she was talking to Admiral Cartney. Admiral, Mrs. Peel, sorry to disturb you. Oh, uh, we seem to get a call from a lady in the evening, but uh, it's long after eight bells, you know. Look, I'm sorry, but I have to see you. It's very important and concerns a security leak and your secretary, Edward Salt. Salt? Security? What the devil's it all about? I'll tell you when we meet. Your office in half an hour, right? <laughs> Peel wasn't the only one to visit the Admiralty that evening. The groom had beaten Salt back to town and was hiding behind the wall drapes, waiting his time. He didn't have long to wait. Salt entered the office swiftly and made for his own desk, switching on a small table lamp and pulling out drawers. The groom moved forward, fitting a silencer onto his gun. He was whistling quietly, rather appropriately, the wedding march. What the de... You! Well, what do you want? Uh, why are you pointing that at me? What have I done? I think you've forgotten who pays you. The signal you gave us it was a fake. The HMS Pyrocanthus in mothballs has been for years. So the general staff won't be visiting enemy installations, will they? Well, I, I got it from the Admiral. You've got to believe me. You could be right. You could be telling the truth. Well, then? In that case, it means that you are under suspicion. Sorry, sir. It's too close to the big day. Can't take risks, old boy. Sorry. Oh, the groom bent over Salt to make sure the work was complete. He was still humming the wedding march. With a smile, he took the white carnation from his buttonhole and dropped it on the body. And hurried out of the room by one door as Mrs. Peel and the Admiral entered by another. Uh, Mrs. Peel, you haven't explained I that. will, given time, I promise. If we can just search his desk, I'm sure I can find something. Uh, uh, hold on. 
A whiff of grape shot in the air. The Admiral advanced to Salt's desk and found the body. My dear girl, I do owe you the most sincere apology. There is something going on. There was. Someone beaten us to it. Mrs. Peel stooped and picked up the buttonhole. Until death do us part. Oh, sorry, just thinking aloud. Oh, please don't. Not in that way. <laughs> Those words send a cold shiver right through my timbers. A sailor's fancy. Ah, a sailor's fancy is fancy free. I've spent my whole life avoiding the final splicing. Never dropped anchor in one port long enough to... Uh, uh, um, didn't you say you want to search the place? Admiral... Is there any particular VIP about to travel anywhere at the moment? There's always a VIP about to travel somewhere. Every waking minute of the day, there's someone on the move. Why? I was just thinking. Lucas was on to something. A VIP getting popped off. Over my dead body. Well, it could be. And what's this? Yeah. London to Norborough, first class return. Oh, must be a hundred of them. Man must have had an, uh, an obsession about railways. Impertinent. Railways run on land. And to think that he used to sit in that office... Look, and... Admiral, they're all punched. Huh? See? All punched neatly through the middle O in Norbrook. Blistering barnacles. I mean, I mean, the hole's about the size... Oh, that self-respecting microdot. Makes sense, doesn't it? Salt fills in the O with a microdot. The ticket collector clips it out. It. And bingo, the message is passed on. Passed on to a ticket collector. The ticket collector on the Norbrook run who takes tranquilizers for his stomach. Well, he's going to need them in future. That's fighting talk, Mrs. Peel. comes a new way to fight tooth decay for Keeps. New fluoride for Keeps toothpaste. It's the clear blue way to fight tooth decay, and it's the best anti-decay toothpaste around. New great tasting for Keeps toothpaste. The clear blue way to fight tooth decay for Keeps. Great teeth are forever. Great teeth are for Keeps. New family fluoride for Keeps toothpaste. They say once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Here's Mrs. Senior from Bogantwini. I've stuck to cold water, Irma, and I'm still using it. It's the strongest washing powder I've used. There's no dirt or stains that can stand up to cold water Omo. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Elmo. <laughs> <laughs> 